You are now tuned in to Freeing the Minds TV, home to mindful living. Peace, love, and light. Peace and love, peace and love, and welcome back to www.freeingtheminds.com and another episode of The Art of Peace, The Art of Peace. And we're going to just jump right on into this one, the um, cup of little coffee, uh, my Alvin Ailey cup, representing Alvin Ailey Dances of America, dance theater. Um, my little sister dances with them for quite some time. And um, they put on amazing performances. If you haven't seen Alvin Ailey yet, make sure you check out an Alvin Ailey performance. Beautiful dancers, beautiful people, beautiful company. Fabulous performances. Fabulous performances. Um, but today, getting right on into the art of peace, man. With a lot of the, um, a lot of things been transpiring lately. A whole lot of things transpiring lately. We've been having a lot of happenings happening in the times that we're in. A lot of negativity happening in the times that we're in. And in these times, even more so happening more lately than in the recent past summers, past years, even in the past days. We've been having a high, a spike in violence, a spike in negativity, a spike in hatred, a spike in ill intent. And at this time, man, we have to call all for a time and a moment of peace, solace, reverence for the lives lost and the families missing those lives. The planet and all life that's struggling on this earth, for all life in one way or another is struggling on this earth. We've reached a point in our experiences where jockeying for space, jockeying for position, the actions in which we do are infringing and imposing energy into the lives of others. Right now the best thing one can do is work on one's own self, clean up one's own thinking, correct one's own attitude and behavior, go inside the confines of one's own mind and pull out all the cobwebs, man plant fertile seeds of potency and positivity and creativity and creative responses, creative alternatives to the negative experiences that we see in daily, everyday lives. Inspire with new conversations, new thoughts, new seeds into the minds of the seeds, the babies, the children, and the everyday people. Right now, it's a time to call forth your greatest spirit and anchor that light. Anchor that light. For all things, man, are interconnected and all things are interrelated, man. We are all one. Operating as one on this one planet. In this universe. As you and I verse, for a better understanding, you and I verse to come to a conclusion, you and I verse to get creative, you and I verse just to take it to the next degree, a deeper understanding of self and environment and relationship. So today we're going to open up this piece right here like we always do, no idea in mind, no idea in intention at heart of the creation of this, but just to simply create freely and be free to create. So let's just engage right on in here. In a spirit of love, peace, harmony, conscious awareness, deep gratitude and thanksgiving, this day, this day, put forth your greatest light, your highest ideal, your most honorary and honorable intention. Put that forth. And already I see this piece coming into play. Mm. At the heart of everything, 
creation. Creation creates. Creation creates. And spirals. Creation creates and spirals out. As well, spirals in. Spirals out. Spirals in. And at the heart of all creation is a creative intent. Creative. Unique. Expressive. Original. Elements of personality in it. Of the individual. Elements of the all-inclusive. Great Spirit. Within each and every creation you'll see the fingerprint of the Most High. So we see these spirals in life all over this world. We see spirals in life all over. We see spirals in life all over. We see them in the flower. We see them in the coiled hair. We see them in the eyes of the tired, the eyes of the delude, deluded, the great deluge. At the heart of creation is creativity. And at the heart of creativity is love. At the heart of creativity is love. At the heart of creativity is love. One loves what one creates and one creates what one loves even though one might not realize that just yet. The love factor underlying everything, all things. Love is the bonding glue. It bonds one things to the next. One is not attached to that which one does not love. Therefore, one may enter into an atmosphere of creation and not recognize what's happening before one if they are not looking with the right eyes Now, since a child, we've been creating artwork since a youth. My mother sent me a picture recently, a picture of me and my older brother as children, probably about three years old, maybe four, and um, holding a professional set of pencils and drawing a turkey, collaborating together with my older brother on drawing a turkey for the upcoming Thanksgiving holiday that was coming up. I remember that picture. I remember that turkey. I even remembered hanging that picture. And the funny thing was, She had us learning on professional tools since a youth. You are who you are in this world long before you realize it. 
the realization is only merely just a happening a aha moment a oh man thank you god creator however you identify but the aha moment comes with an appreciation and deep gratitude of the reckoning the realization the who one is why one is kind of like when one falls into one's purpose or all of a sudden just shows up at the right place at the right time and they get the audition or they land the job times we in to maintain one's peace of mind it will be key to stay in one's creative so-called creative bag being creative finding a way to allow the mind to relax and express itself in a way that it feels free because the mind must feel free in its expression because you got to remember at all times we're on a life journey we're on the life journey you're going to experience all types of things in life it's, some stuff is going to make sense some stuff will not make sense some stuff you'll agree with some stuff you will disagree with but regardless to whom or what you are here you got to make the best of what you are while you are here what you have all these good things so one must be aware of one's tool. What is one's tool? What is one's tool? The thing that makes one happy. What is it that you use to find a peace of mind when you're upset? What is it that brings you peace in a crazy, hectic world? What is it? What is it? For me, it's art. Creating being creative and that creation could be in the form of a children's book a form of this illustration here a form of whatever Days, whatever the form may be. Creativity, man, is a real peace of mind. shirt creativity brings a peace of mind. So every time I'm upset, I find myself, I'm drawing something and it brings me a peace of mind. It grounds me again. When I find myself a little um, uneasy or something like that, let's just sketch in something that just helps to ground me again. You know what I mean? When I find myself in a situation of frustration, drawing helps to ground me again. So for myself, I see 
I learned a lot through the arts. In fact, I'd be close out to be honest to say that the arts taught me just about everything I know. Whether it's the drawing and painting arts or spiritual arts, it's the arts. Help me navigate my way through this life. Find my purpose out here. Find meaning. Same time, add on to other people's lives by way of children's books or what have you. Drawings and painting or doing little sketches for people back when I was younger or making little t shirts when I was in middle school. It was the arts that always sustained myself and helped to show me who I was, bring myself some value and help me to see the value in myself and my ideas. They had power and they were appreciated. And in the end, through it all, appreciation and self-recognition is the journey. We go through so many different things to arrive at who we are, who we've always been. butterfly. Now when you're looking at the butterfly, the butterfly symbolizes transformation, symbolizes change over time. The butterfly also symbolizes self-reflection and expansion, its wings expanding beyond its limitations of its environment designated to the earth. The butterfly has an opportunity to see life from a different perspective than it's seen it before. Butterflies on the ground see life experiencing life as caterpillar only to grow to experience life later as the butterfly full-fledged now throughout its pursuit of self-discovery of finding out who it is. Not only does it find out who it is, the caterpillar and the butterfly in the process of the transformation, it finds out what it is. And it realizes it was more than it ever thought it was self to be. This is just like who we are, the human being. Being also human, in its stance, begins to realize one and the same as the butterfly. The transformation, if it allows itself to take place, will only unfold a new being within oneself, taking one to new heights one hasn't experienced before, only to realize this is who they've always been. They were just waiting to get to this point, striving to get to this point. Everything they've gone through on the earth, in their lower states, if they survive, they will fly high. They will fly high. Sky. Got the sky up there. And out of that creation, I mean from creation, you'll have everything from the ant. And the ant, one of those creatures that's often 
underrated, underestimated. the ant. and underrated so it's like you gotta stay creative in this world otherwise you may feel out of place in a world that's so rapidly changing and to keep up with it you gotta stay creative you gotta stay creative Creativity will keep and sustain one's heart through turbulent times. And that's just honesty. The reality of it all. He's got his shirt. So it's like, if one loses one's own creativity in the process of self-creation, where does one find oneself? How does one find one's creativity again?
portrait. So it's, uh, so it's, uh, it's like it's meant. like uh to maintain yourself once got to stay in that creative zone to maintain oneself once got to stay in that creative zone because that creative zone that spiral that frequency the vibrations that spiral is what we come from that's what we are they say at uh the string theory right they say talking about you break an element down to its base below the atoms more simpler than the atom they say they exist things exist and likened to like a harmonic. We say things likened to a harmonic, so it's ultimately like if you get down to the essence of an individual, you can pluck at the individual, uh, I guess you would call it at a, at, a, at a macro level, you pluck at the individual, each individual has a harmonic, a sound, a sound resonance, a sound resonance, a string, a note, a key note. So we look at this and we see that even in our base construction, our, our most elemental, rudimentary construction, we exist not only just as frequencies, but also as sound. So we're sound, light, power. Sound, light, and power. So when we see the human being coming into expression and expressing themselves, they're expressing themselves through sound, expressing themselves through light, these various different shades of light, these various different so-called so colors. At the same time, physical form is light pigmentations, lines of force, looking at things along the lines of force, recognizing these lines of force and then replicating them upon paper, replicating them up in photography, replicating them in forms of film, speaking the intent behind it, meaning the feeling behind it, the idea behind it, and this can be the storyline, this is the image that we see on page, the idea that comes out from the human being that comes forth, whether it's in the form of a song, an idea, a painting, a picture, or even just a gasp. The expression of the human being is most, the expression of life is most necessary. The expression of life is most necessary and the preservation of life is most necessary. Therefore, everything is sacred. Everything has a purpose. Everything is sacred. Everything is here for an intent, a desired outcome. Creator makes no mistakes. One of the greatest threats and gravest dangers one can do in life is inflict pain upon another individual. Inflict pain upon one's individual life. Inflict pain 
upon another individual human being or the planet, be it grass, be it insect, be it animal, beast, human, whatever. One of the greatest violations to life itself, the creator, is to harm another thing. One of the greatest things to do, one of the most horrific things to do in life is to harm another individual, another thing, a life. Be that life an insect life, be that life a blade of grass. One of the greatest things, gravest harms one can do. One of the gravest harms one can do is to harm life and anything in life for that matter. One of the greatest damages one can do is to harm life and anything in life for that matter. Everything was created for your experience. Everything was created to supplement and support your experience here. To not only just supplement and support your experience, but to give you an understanding on what it is you're experiencing and who you are and where you're at. All these things, man. A blade of grass has never made a bomb on its own. An ant has never caused a nuclear war. A butterfly has not, never gone into a place and shot up the spot. There's nothing in nature that is coming out here destroying life with ill intent. Nature sticks to the rules and the laws of nature. The first law of nature is self-preservation. And it's going to show us the balance within this whole thing because all things need balance and all things grow through the understanding of balance. Ultimately, the growth and the understanding comes from one's trial and error of the understanding of balance. Balance inside as well as with inside, outside oneself. Who one is and who one is not. What one is and what one is not. We grow through our understanding of who we are through these understandings of balance. So through balance we grow, through balance we see, through balance we understand. But at the heart of it all, at the heart of all creation, creativity. Creativity is Creativity is is the creativity is the heart Creativity is the heart of creation. Creativity is the heart of creation. Creativity is the heart of creation. Not only is it at the heart of creation, it is the heart of creation. Creativity is the heart of creation. In fact, without creativity, nothing comes into creation. Nothing comes into life. Nothing is created. Nothing is born. So we have to look upon all life as something that is beautiful, something that is blessed by creator itself, something that was brought forth from a deeper space, a deeper place with much more meaning, much more intent, far greater and far deeper than it even on itself realizes. Man. Everything I've learned, I've learned through art and spirituality, man. Everything. Mathematics is art. Everything is art. There's no getting away from it. There's only an integration and a deeper understanding of such. Creativity is the heart of creation. 
Therefore, we always are always growing, we're always unfolding, we're always expressing. Even the now moment is never enough to express how one is currently feeling. There's not enough time to express oneself in the current moment of now. This is why silence is powerful because silence encompasses the whole gamut. Without words, everything is said. Without words, everything is said. Inside simultaneously therefore that rush and that emotional feeling that deep rush of feeling like we feel might have felt it right now with it gives you the goosebumps and you, ah so much is said in that moment that creates that expression of goosebumps on the flesh or that deep feeling of euphoria inside the being or that open peace aha moment in the mind so much is said without being a word being spoken all we got to do is just take it in the spirit speaks far greater a language and far more intricate and detailed than any human language could ever speak the universe is speaking it perfectly. Our words are only concoctions that we created of our own selves in agreement with each other to formulate words in which we can communicate and reflect a similar idea. So I can say apple and you get the apple idea of an idea of an apple in mind, but the apple is not considered itself an apple. The apple doesn't even call itself an apple. In fact, the apple itself is nameless and blameless. It is simply is what it is and does what it does and goes through what it goes through and does what it does and we see our relationship and understand our relationship with it we would call that nutritious beneficial good harmonious to the body helps to digest your foods helps to clean the internal system so our relationship is useful let's use more of these apples but if we put out bad apples and we put out bad apples and we see that these bad apples might have, they have their place too. But the bad apples are their places, not next to the good apples. For one apple, one rotten apple spoils a whole batch. But one good apple cannot turn a batch back right again. It's going to have to go through those cycles and through those processes, which means that bad apple is going to have to break down. It's going to have to break the body down. It's going to have to take those seeds and nurture those seeds into the earth again. So the whole thing is going to have to disintegrate, go back into the earth from whence it came, refresh itself, reflect on itself, dig deeper into those soils, root itself deep into this earth, and then begin to pop back up into the light again and reach towards the sun. So it's going to have to go through all the process of self-regeneration, self-regeneration, -re self-creation to come out and make itself useful again. So once we realize ourselves have gone too far and we become no longer useful to our environment, no longer useful to our communities, no longer useful in our field of work, then it's time to move on and do something else. Figure out what your next thing is. Figure out where you can be useful. So that goes down into the breaking down of the body, breaking down of the psychology, breaking down of the understanding of what one was all this time to where one is going and what one has become now. And where is that best to be planted, to be able to be fruitful. So sometimes we might find ourselves in one location and that might be location where we're supposed to be the whole time duration. Sometimes you have other plants and bodies and beings that are planted all throughout all over. You might be planted here for a little bit, then you go over here for a little bit, then you go over here for a little bit only to come back, back over here. But either way it goes, you follow your process. You follow your process. You follow your process, and your process is going to be unique to you. Every individual's process of creation and self-creativity, of self-manifestation, is unique to the individual. No two experiences are ever the same. In fact, no two things are ever the same. They could even be replicas of each other, but they are not the same. Nor are they occupying the same place in space and time. One will be on top of the other, or next to the other, or below the other, or wherever it is, right next but there they are their own. And if we look detailed enough, we look closely enough, we look intently enough, we will recognize the subtle differences. And it's those subtle differences which make them original, which make them you, which make them yours, which make them mine. We put them out there, which make them ours. We share the idea. We're all one unit moving in this thing together. We just must offer the universe better ideas, better thoughts, more things and more positivity to work with, more love and more unity and more harmony to work with. We must put forth good ideas, good intentions from our hearts, filtered through our hearts, from our minds, through our hearts, out into this world.
out into this world. This piece right here is simply a reflection of the self-creation that is existent in all beings, all individual, and all things. Creativity is the heart of creation. Creativity is the heart of creation. Take your time and unfold. Be your beautiful, bold self. That being said, thank you again for tuning on in to The Art of Peace, another episode of The Art of Peace on FrameTheMinds.com. All these pieces are available and are for sale up on the website at www.FrameTheMinds.com. Everything is reasonably priced. So um, stop on over there, check on out, see what all is there, man. Thank you again for tuning in. Wish you nothing but love and light this beautiful day. Power, positivity, and abundance in your creations. Mm. Stay creative, everybody. Stay creative. Love and light. Peace. Visit www.freeingtheminds.com for your unique, original Freeing the Minds merchandise and apparel.